By the way, if you're holding on for a Frozen reference, just let it go. <gasps> oh no, what have I done? Today, I'm Uther the Painbringer. Blondes may have more fun, but redheads are more fun. 100% pure bull, baby. Not enough hatred. Just kidding. I hate you a bunch right now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Moist Weenus, and I am joined this evening by the man, the myth, the legend, P1106. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to give you the uh, the traditional Weenus uh, welcome. <coughs> Whew. Cover your ears. That is loud. All right, so we are here tonight to see uh, a Div C West game between Work Hard, Throw Hard, and Arrogant Nephilim. This uh, should be an exciting game. I know I'm looking forward to it. Uh, is there anything uh, that you wanted to say before we start this game, Key? Anything that you uh... maybe predict to see or would hope to see? I don't know. It's really kind of an open question. Yeah, like it's... Uh... I can be honest that I don't really follow like the lower division uh, since last season, which is my first time in NGS. But uh, I'm exciting, and uh, I always heard that there are a lot of like different comps that will come out. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I actually get to uh, watch uh, Aragon Nathlam uh, last weekend um, for their in-house game versus their sister team. So. I, I I got to watch them a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Excellent. Uh, yeah, and so uh, did you want to tell us a little bit, or just for a quick second, tell us about your team that you play in NGS? Right, so uh, I'm uh, the captain of uh, Division B East Team 104, and uh, I pl I'm a support main, so uh, if you guys have any time to check out the games, uh, you feel free to uh, drop by and uh, watch us play. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to check with our teams, make sure we're still ready. Uh, to to roll here. Uh, first map was picked by Arrogant Nephilim. So work hard, throw hard. We'll have first hero ban, first hero pick. All right. We have a ready from one, ready from two. Okay. Here we go. Let's move on over to draft. Volskaya Foundry is the first map that we are going to tonight. Fighting on that single control point. So anticipate we see we're gonna see a lot of five on five team fighting action, which 
you know, uh, gets me a little bit excited. Yeah, for sure. Like it's always uh, all about the team fights in those uh, up like uh, point control maps. This is one of the map that you always see like some kind of specialist. So we'll see if we see one of them tonight. Right. No matter no matter what you're doing uh, on this map, there's always going to be someone split pushing somewhere at some point. Mm -hmm. Either either you have control of the point and you're spreading out. Or you don't have a chance because you've lost some members, and so you want to, uh, you know, soak what you can while you're waiting. First ban comes out, and it is Stu Kavi, followed up by a ban of KT from Arrogant Nephilim. I'm going to just bump up my game sound just a little bit. All right, there we go. Both bans are pretty solid. Not what I expect, because uh, I... I, I would expect to see some some kind of Ural ban or Asmodan ban. Uh, I think those two would be a higher priority. Okay, yeah, there you go. There's Asmodan ban. That's a good especially call. The, yeah, especially he's pretty pretty strong right now. You get a you get a huge chicken honk for that. <laughs> oh yes. Predictions, correct predictions. You always celebrate. Well done. Yeah, and I, I can see why KT was banned too, because if you're not going to play KT, it can just be so, so do so much damage to you when you're all grouped up together, all yeah. all, all burning and passing around bombs. Uh, and drop the Phoenix down, that's it. <laughs> yep. All right, so Jimmy, Jimmy Laner is also banned. Uh, since you're a support main key, what do you think of the changes to Stukov? Uh, I feel like he's actually stronger. I know some people don't necessarily agree, but I think... Just because his healing is now stronger, even though with the sacrifice of, um, I guess, his silence and his E, uh, I feel like he's actually in a better place than he was. I'm actually surprised that we don't see an Alex here. Instead, we have uh, Malfurion and Deckard. Both teams prioritize their support pretty high. Yeah, that is very interesting, and yeah, and I agree as well. Alex can be so strong on this point, and you know, popping dragon and being able to push the rest of the team back, things of that of that nature. Oh, there's your there's your off lane pusher, lane pusher, for sure. <laughs> so now, Monkus Beaver uh, in the chat says, "Oh, you're scouting our games last week," <laughs> <laughs> so they know. All right, so now we're on to our third ban phase. Uh, I hear that next year we're going to have 12 bans on each side, and all of the heroes <laughs> will not be able to be picked, so that's something interesting to look for, wait for. Yeah, we'll just all play, like, the off-meta stuff then. <laughs> right. <laughs> Malthiel, getting the ban hammer from Arrogant Nephilim. Do Last... we get to see something strange here now? Like, Malthiel ban? Maybe something with, like, maybe like a Sonya, I think would be good here, or maybe like a Gould. Well, I mean, well, Yuzibo's already kind of a mage, huh? Yurao is still up, so Malthio is good into Yurao, so maybe we'll see her in the offlane for Aragon Nephilim? Possibly, possibly. Uh, I mean, they still have to pick up their main tank, too, so maybe, what do you think for their main tank? A Johanna? Uh, or Johanna your... is safe here. Um... The other option would be uh, Diablo would not be bad here. Yorel. Well said. I, I'm going to count that as a prediction. <laughs> <laughs> On your side, of course. Thrall. I think uh, Thrall is a, is, is a great offlaner as well. I like Thrall. They are... I mean, they might be a little bit squishy. I guess it depends what their last pick is going to be. Uh, so on the side of Burkhardt, Frohat, two more picks here. Blaze. Blaze and Greymane. Mm. Interesting. Well, they do have a lot of CC on the side of Warcard Throwhard with Blaze, Murden, mm. Malfurion. Oh, and a Johanna. Okay, I'm going to count that as a prediction for me, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take what I can get. All right, guys. We are uh, we are done with the draft. Draft is finished, and we are about to go into game one of Work Hard Throw Hard versus Arrogant Nephilim.
Naz is an offlane on this map, says Monk Monkus Fever. Yeah, that's that's true. I, it probably will be what Blaze. I mean, you could even take you could even take Greymane in there if you wanted to. Yeah. Um. There, like it's it's tough to rotate. Even though you can rotate top mid, I feel like it's tough. It's kind of tough. Uh, so it's not too bad to have two kind of solo laner on your team just to just to keep the soak up. So we'll see how Blaze and Nasibo kind of rotate and uh, and do their wave clear. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game one. I'm going to introduce uh, Work Hard, Throw Hard, the blue team over here on the left. We have Delita on the Nazebo. We have Derg over here on the gray main. I've already zoomed out way too far. I need to get a little closer. We have Mike Check playing Muradin. We have uh, we have Ash Rain on Malfurion. And I believe I missed one. Is this Blaze X Havoc down in the bottom? Would you do me the favor of uh, looking at the red team for Arrogant Nephilim, sir? Yeah. So for the Arrogant Nephilim, we have uh, Trapes on Jaina, Sakata on uh, Johanna. We have now Pointer on uh, Decker, the Kaladin on uh, Frawl, and lastly we have. Uh... Did I miss anyone? I think Kimi it's... on uh, Nas. Uh, wait, no, that's uh, Urao. Yes, absolutely. I believe I th it might be Kaime. I might be wrong. I'm sure we'll figure it out. So we're gonna go ahead and see a four v four in the mid right now, splitting off one player from each side down into the bottom lane. It is going to be a matchup between Blaze and Urao. Who do you think wins that matchup down there? Uh, Urao basically win most. One versus one at the current stage, other than Mathiel. So uh, I would give an upper hand to Ural, uh if they are like even in uh, in skill level. So we'll see. But it should be pretty even, and no one really gets too much of an advantage down there. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing how that slugfest works out. Both teams are rotating to get these get these creep waves, get the XP, and then quickly rotate so that they don't miss anything. And so far, there's been no ganking happening. Uh, we do no. see a camp movement here from uh, both Urel and Thrall getting this fortification camp, so that will help. Mm -hmm. I think Arrogant Nephilim are really good about getting camps. Uh, now yeah. we see Work Hard, Throw Hard. They're also going to pick up their camp over here. Yeah, actually, they did the camp... Uh, like they time it perfectly. They basically just lose like one or two minions, which is not a big deal Yeah, they do have a slight XP lead here, but we'll see if that evens out once Greymane picks up their, his, their own turret camp down there Nope So Looks like Greymane is gonna go back to base. He says he wants to get ready for this uh, for the next fight that happens Still rotations, trying to soak the lanes, getting XP. Let's see, check in back bottom. It looks like Urel does have a significant advantage over this Blaze right here, right now. Yeah, uh, now Blaze will have to go back and either tap or just uh, just herf and uh, get ready for this uh, first objective. Absolutely. Yep, and that's an advantage. If you get them to burn their, their well tap, they won't have it for this objective, which will be up in 20 seconds. It'll be in mid point A. Uh, what do you think uh, What do you think Decker Kane is going to pick for his ultimate, just for, for giggles? On a point objective uh, like this, is it better to get you know, stay a while, or do you get Lordado? Uh, the way their comm set up, I would think uh, stay a while and listen would be... A better uh, alt here, so like you just just leave everyone, and then uh, Jaina and Fraud just drop their alts, and uh, and that should basically uh, control the blue team pretty hard here. Yep, we see an interesting split here. Only two members of work hard, throw hard are going to be near the point and possibly trying to contest while they send other members in to keep them in lane. Getting some push top, the camp is going to be taken down. Uh, work hard, throw hard is going to clear that in the top lane. But so far, the objective is going to start ticking in favor of Arrogant Nephilim here very quickly. Someone pointed out in the chat room that everybody on Arrogant Nephilim has the same spinny blade mount. 
<laughs> yeah, that's actually it's a relatively new mount. It's I think it's a 10k go mount, so it's good to see them having a matching mount. They're but we getting uh, very low. Were, now like a root from Decker actually root them and all members of Workhard Throwhard are getting very very low, and they are getting chased off of the point. Greymane trying to make it back behind the gate. It looks like Arrogant Nephilim has successfully pushed back Workhard Throwhard from this point, and they continue to tick on the objective. Work hard, throat hard is thinking about going back in for another engagement. Maybe stall this out. We're in overtime. A lot of damage coming out onto Thrall. Ooh, Johanna taking a lot of damage as well. Trabe in the back, getting dropping a little bit low, playing safe down there. Johanna taking a lot of punishment. Possibly going to come back in. Blaze is getting low now. Big root on Murden. Murden tries to jump away. Will they catch him? Oh, to kill it in does get the kill. And the first protector will go to Arrogant Nephilim. I was going to say if they can get out without anyone dying, it would be great. But uh, even just one person, like uh, just losing the bird in there, shouldn't be too big of an issue. Now they just have to, uh, to burn down this uh, protector as quick as possible. Yeah, and Arrogant Nephilim does a really good job of uh, going back, healing up if they need to, and then splitting back into lanes. Your elk drops down into bottom. They know that this first Punisher isn't going to be able to do a ton of stuff, so uh, they might as well soak the lanes, g gain that experience advantage, and then get closer to 10. Ideally, you, you want to try to get this well up top, because the next objective will always spawn top, but uh, I, th I think soaking those lanes was, you know, getting that extra XP is also a, a great choice as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, it looks like they took quite a bit of damage on the Protector and uh, so they the would not be able to get uh, the well here. But then we have a fight. fight just yeah, broke out. and Oh, Greymane gets taken out. Muradin drops as well. Blaze is, is in trouble. He's running. Yurel is hopping in over him. Oh, and there goes Nazebo. I'm not sure if it is a good decision by Workout Throw Hot there. As soon as the Protector uh, runs out, Muradin just jumped back in and tried to get someone. Yeah, I but... saw him hiding in the bush there looking for a flank, yeah. but may maybe uh, maybe he jumped in and got more than he bargained for. That was uh, that was quite the, re the reverse gank by Arrogant yeah. Nephilim. Well, who has reached 10? So Jaina's going to pick up a Ring of Frost. Thrall's going to pick up Earthquake. We have Sacred Ground from Yorel. Stay a while and listen was chosen by Deckard, and Johanna picks up Blessed Shield. A uh, full level plus advantage. Almost two level advantage here for Arrogant Nephilim. As and they that's move. when and that's when like you that's what you don't want to see on this map, because uh, it's pretty snowboy and and uh, Arrogant Nephilim can just uh, play safe, play the map, and uh, they can control this game pretty hard. Yep, this is Arrogant Nephilim's map, so it looks like they have a, a quite a good strategy of picking up camps, uh, having when you're when you're even in a team fight, having a bunch of items will help you maybe give you the advantage. When you have items and a couple level advantage and heroics, like really, it's uh, it makes it really hard to fight into. Uh, but we're cut for hot, it's closing on oh. intent, so so oh. oh. Trabe almost got picked there, but they reversed it around and took down Greymane. Muradin's quite low. He should be able to get out. Does jump away. But the rest of Workhard Throwhard needs to escape. Zebo is going to be fine. And it's five kills to zero for Arrogant Nephilim. Yeah, they definitely control the macro pretty well so far. And uh, I was listening to the NGS podcast uh, earlier today for the season preview, and uh, and the panel there actually thinks Arrogant Nephilim can be one of the top team in this division. So uh, we'll see if they can get out they this are, series with 2-0. Yeah, they are very good players uh, and very nice people. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not not uh, can't find a nicer group out there. Although everyone in Div C is is pretty is pretty great. All right, so Blaze is going to teleport out of there on the wrong side of Arrogant Nephilim. Uh, the new objective is about to unlock. In about five seconds. 
we'll see we'll see how this how this goes both teams do have their ultimates uh do you mind going over real quick what uh the talents picked by work hard and throw hard for so, their oh, work hard throw hard they have uh cursed bullet on Greymane. they have tranquility on malfurion we have a uh, gigantron on the zebo we're then picking avatar and blaze picking bunker they will need that bunker. There's so much CC that's coming out from Arrogant Nephilim that, uh, that, that they will they will need that. Although there's a lot of CC, you know, possibilities from the other team as well. Stay a while comes out, only catches one. Janet doing a lot of damage here. Ring goes down. Bunker drops. Greymane does fall. Trape's in trouble. He's running for the back. Bunker's about to expire to kill it and taking a lot of damage. It's poisoned all the way. Will drop. Malfurion very, very low. There goes Thrall. Oh my goodness. Whoops. There goes Blaze. And it is going to be three deaths on the side of Work Hard Throw Hard. Make that four. There goes Malfurion. Whew. And now we have, you know, uh, still, still have a high uh, two level advantage plus over here. Uh, you know, Work Hard Throw Hard, they got, a, they got a lot of time on the point, but. They could they couldn't get it and uh, and did lose a lot of players here. Do you think they have a chance to come back to this point and re challenge? Uh, and at this point they will not have thirteen, so I don't think they should contest this, and they would they should just like give up the fort and just defend at their keep gate and uh, hopefully don't lose too much on that. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. It's really hard to fight up uh, fight up a talent tier and levels. Uh, the camp was picked up by Arrogant Nephilim, so that uh, might just be a distraction. Here we go. Second Protector is up and running, and we have Jaina and Johanna jump inside. Still, it's only an 11-minute Protector, so it's not going to be as strong as it will be later, but it'll still be able to at least get this fort, and then some. Uh, I'm interesting to see will they actually go top keep, or just rotate all the way down to bottom, and just uh, try to get some damage on the on the fort there because that's where the next objective is mm -hmm. very very smart uh Kavila trust in the in the chat does point out that uh they, that work hard throw hard wants this game to go late because you know nazebo stack 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 he becomes more powerful later on but yep. uh so far you know the next the next push after this mid fort is almost completely gone, and this bottom fort is going to be taking a lot of damage. Any structure right. damage that they take on from here on out is pr is going to be related to keeps. Red team has destroyed the fort. Definitely, uh, Nasibo is currently sitting at 100, almost 130 stacks, so he's closing in on his uh, his uh, quest there. Yeah, that's quite a few stacks. I think he's he's doing quite well in that regard. Yep. Here we go. Fight is coming out. There goes the protector. Looks like we might actually get a fight here. Yep, Arrogant Nephilim is going to take all that toad damage, but they are going to chase a little bit. Uh, work hard, throw hard does get behind the what would be a gate, protected by this fort, which has hardly any health. But uh, no one, no one dies in that engagement. We do see 16 picked up by Arrogant Nephilim. They are taking, they're they're keeping this lead and just rolling with it, and uh, like you said, it, you know, getting a little bit of snowball action. Yeah, it's really hot at the moment for Rogue Half Pro Hot to come back to this game. Other than uh, they have to win a team fight, which it's tough for them to do because Arrogant Nephilim just have too much poke and. Uh, and Decker probably out heal Malfurion in a long fight, so we'll see if Work Hard Pro Hard can come up with some clutch uh, fights and get back into this. Yes, Malfurion had an excellent route back there to save Greymane's life. Uh, so there's 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 been great plays and on both sides. Here, oh, let's see if they if they get picked out. Kime does get rooted, but. No follow-up engage. The rest of Arrogant Nephilim are... It looks like they're searching. It looks like they're trying to get a gank or at least just get this bottom fort, which should be no problem. Blaze? Will he get out? There go. There he goes. Charging away. But they do get the fort. They got the support camp. 
they have their own turret. Looks like they might try to push in on, on this wall here of the keep wall. Yeah, if they can get a keep wall down, it will further prep the next objective. But they decide to walk out. Yep, and... they decide not to. Yep. Uh, looks like they want to invade the top cam. Nope. Yep, Greyman was working on that. If they had known that Greyman was up there, they might might have maybe gone for it. I'm not sure, but they, they definitely couldn't see him on the map. So, right now, you know, huge advantage, three level lead for Arrogant Nephilim. They're up a talent tier. They don't they don't want to get into a situation where they they give work hard, throw hard an opportunity to get back in this game. They want to fight with their advantage where they can, but they, it seems like they would want to do it on their terms, which I think seems seems smart. They don't have to chase the enemy team. They know where they're going to be. They're going to be on the objective in about 20 seconds. And it does look like we will have a uh, same talent tier fight at the bottom because uh, Workout Pro Hot should be able to get 16 here before they hop onto the objective. Yeah, that will, that will be much better than staying at 15, and they do get 16 now. So this might be the best fight that they get this game. So, I agree. Or, yeah. So you kind of sometimes you just have to go with your you know your best opportunity and go from there. Uh, we are going to see a turret the turret camp get picked up by Arrogant Nephilim. Work hard, throw hard. Does step on the point first and they start that counter ticking. Here comes Deckard Kane to lead the fight. I'm <laughs> getting stunned. All right, so it looks like Arrogant Nephilim is just waiting to engage here, laying down some potions, getting set up. They have they have uh, two turrets on both sides. When those come down, it's time to fight. Ooh, an excellent stay a while and listen, but Deckard's taking a lot of damage. There goes Bunker. There goes Earthquake. There goes Ring. A lot of ults being used here. Marfurin very low. Does get taken down. Trabe is on Jaina is trying to get out. Muradin is pursuing... Derg on Greymane will drop as well. This is starting to look like it's going to be more deaths here for Work Hard, Try Hard. Blaze! Blaze also drops. And that's a 3 for 0. Oh, it could be more. Nazebo getting caught up a little bit in, in his own zombie wall. Will put out a lot of damage, but will drop as well. This fight went very well for Arrogant Nephilim. They had the advantage. And uh four four for four for none. And the and the protector. It's gonna be 17 minute protector too. Do you think this is a push key that work hard throw hard can defend? Uh they would have to not lose anyone. If they lose anyone, it will give Arrogant Nephilim a chance to end the game. Uh, but uh, it will be a tough defense, so uh, they need to they need to just make a play at the moment because uh, they are almost four level behind, and uh, they just need to possibly even fight behind the protector and just pick a fight. Yep, yep. You gotta watch out for picks. If arrogant Nephilim gets picks on this push, oh, Kime will not get ganked here. All right, looks like we're going to see an engage start outside of the fort and then probably work its way through once once this wall goes down. Murden's jumping in. Grayman on the back line just gets blown up. Now Blaze getting very, very low. Blaze drops as well. Getting a lot of value out of Earthquake, just slowing everybody. And slowing slowing your team while there's a protector all over you is deadly. Murden's on the back line trying to distract everybody. Gets a little bit of attention. Jumps away. This keep is 100% gone. And now they are trying to push and try to end the game here. Yep. And if they get this kill on Nazebo, oh, there goes Nazebo as well. So things, things are looking like they are coming to a close here. Turret is dropped. Murden's going to jump in and do what he can. The core is at 50%. 30 percent 20 percent 10 9 and this game goes over to arrogant nephilim game one pretty clean game from them kill count is 16 to 1 they controlled the map pretty well and just uh took the first objective and uh just
play the map out. Absolutely. Uh, they played so well. They got the lead early. Uh, they kept the lead, and they didn't. Uh, they didn't let go of it. Uh, if you're just looking at the post-game screen here, uh, let's just look at a couple things. Um, oh, have they always had healing numbers for Urel? Interesting. That is something that I did not pay attention to. It looks like it. Well, if I actually knew anything, I would know whether they did or not. But normally, it seems like <laughs> if you're not, a, if you're a warrior, they don't keep track of your healing numbers. But uh, interesting. All right, so they put that that, that set on there. Uh, Decker doing doing uh, doing the Lord's work there. Sixty one k healing everybody. Um, Malfurion had some excellent roots um, as well. Fifty k healing there. The issue here is Grayman only did 24k damage. Uh, Nasibo actually has the top hero damage on the side of Workout Pro Uh it's, it's just that Aragonathum has too much uh, crowd control, too much slow on basically every single hero of that team that Grayman cannot go in and do anything. Yep, Grayman, it's a one it's a one way trip if Grayman goes in because he's not making it back out. And yeah, I was just looking at the you know, it's hard to do damage when you're dead. 16 kills from Arrogant Nephilim. They did a lot of killing this game compared to only one death for their team. Uh, and, you know, just look at all the look at all the siege damage from Urel. That's 170,000. That's that's crazy. Johanna also doing a lot as well as Jaina. So, but, you know, they were all alive for a lot longer. Um, Urel seemed to be a, a quite quite a strong offlaner in this uh, in this matchup. For sure. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that Workout Pro had just banned her out in the second map. Especially, think, uh -huh. we are going, especially we are going to Dragonshire, so Ural is... That map is one of pretty much Ural's best map, actually, so we'll see if they actually ban her out. Absolutely. I am going to update the score here. One for Arrogant Nephilim. And yeah, like you like you mentioned, we will be going to Dragonshire next. Let me add that in as well. In this two moist game matchup. All right. Well, I think uh, I think we're going to go and take a quick break as I set up the next lobby. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about right now um, about this last game? Anything else lingering? Uh, no, I think Aragon Athlam just had the better draft, and uh, on the side of Workout Pro Hard, they were lacking a bit of damage. Uh, hopefully, they can adjust and uh, and uh, see what kind of comps that they will pull up on the second map, because uh, they might have made some mistake last game trying to get an Azebo. It's always like a late game, you always want to play the late game, but if you lose the early game too hard, it's, it's really tough, so... Let's see if they can make the adjustment in the second game. Absolutely. Okay. Well, if uh, if they do get the the respect URL ban, then you're getting the, those those chicken honks, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be right back with game two. We're just gonna set it up. So uh, have a look at some of my chickens. We'll be right back. <laughs>
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for this exciting matchup between Work Hard, Throw Hard, and Arrogant Nephilim. Div C West, uh, I'm joined once again for game two uh, by Key1108. Key, thank you so much, sir, once again for joining me. I'm having a blast. Yeah, like uh, game one was awesome, and uh, I can't wait to see them play out the second map on Dragonshire. Absolutely. That's where we are headed. Of course, Arrogant Nephilim took game one uh, on their map pick. Maybe Work Hard, Throw Hard will be able to uh, take game two on their map. Roth G, thank you, sir, so much for the hundred biddies. That's that's very, very nice of you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Oh, and also I missed a follow from Joe Hio, uh probably about an hour ago. So my bad. Uh, I think we were probably just doing the, uh, the starting the stream. But I think both teams are ready. Is there anything you want to talk about before we get into game two here, Key? Uh, I really hope Burke has to have been the year out. So <laughs> I hope they do that. If not, they will have a hard time again. So uh, let's go. All right. Just checking with the teams. Let's see. Oh, I caught him in the middle of another conversation. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they're still ready. Looks like they're having <laughs> some fun in the chat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, okay, so we're getting a ready and a ready. So we are ready to get into game two here. We are going to Dragonshire. Let's do it. Three, a two, a one. Let's go. Dragonshire. Perfect. All right. So, uh, like we said, this is Work Hard, Throw Hard's map. So the first hero ban, hero pick will go to Arrogant Nephilim in the lovely red on the right-hand side of your screen. What to ban here? KT. Oh, they, they ban KT both games. They just don't like people spreading the bomb on them, which I... I agree, like, I, I personally don't like playing against KT, you have to position yourself really, like, spread out, just like, garage. So it's, it's, it's fair. Yeah, yep, they're gonna keep the ban the same, ban KT, if you don't want to deal with it, that's, that's awesome. Um, thank you very much, Swing, for, uh, the, the 100 bits, I appreciate it. Teammate Swing, Heartsees. Uh, hopefully that I think I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I have those turned off for the actual gameplay. So for right now in the in the uh, the draft, we'll just have to deal with it. All right. So and that's going back to the first. Oh, there it is. <laughs> called it, called it from the lobby of last game on that respect your L ban, and I don't uh, I don't blame them. That was real tough last game. This time, though, Asmodan is not going to be banned, but will be picked up by Arrogant Nephilim. It's interesting. Um, Asmodan is strong, but I don't think this is one of his stronger maps, so I would see how he controlled the top lane here. Yeah, he might just be annoying enough to, like, we just can't leave him alone, because every time we do, he just push, push, pushes. Okay, so Malfiel and Jaina picked up here by Work Hard, Throw Hard. Jaina swapping sides. Deckard picked up again, as well as Johanna by Arrogant Nephilim. Seems like it, it worked well for them last game, and they want to continue using it. So, if it, if it uh, if it ain't if it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it. Yeah, for sure. So now on to the third band. Arrogant Athelum still needs, basically, right now they haven't shown any of their damage, so let's see what they ban out here. Mm. Ban out the Thrall. Do you think Thrall scared them last game and they are like, alright, we're not going to let them have their same tools that, that we let them have last time? Yeah, I think the Earthquake slowed down a lot of what they wanted to do, so it's, it's, uh, 
It's understandable, Ben, here. Yeah, and they took away they took away their uh, Jaina from Arrogant Nephilim, so... That's almost the same as a respect ban, I suppose. No garage today, says Work Hard, Throw Hard. Or, uh, says Arrogant Nephilim. So, Work Hard, Throw Hard still need a tank, a support, and another flex pick. I have a feeling that they will not be grabbing... Well, maybe they will. I was going to say they're going to be careful with dive, but that's a lot of dive right there between Malfiel, Karazim, and Diablo. What do you think of Karazim? I, I like asking you questions about supports just because you're the support <laughs> main for your team. What, how, do you, what do you, how do you feel Karazim is uh, in the meta right now? I feel he is not in a great place, even though you see him quite a bit in pro play whenever someone wants to like play a dive heavy comp, but uh, you need to really have your team work uh, together to make sure that you get the healing up okay. Oh, yeah. wah, 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 wah. All right. Well, we will get this player back in. And I believe we are going to just uh, carry on with the same draft uh, when we get back on. Is that correct? Yep, yep. We got it. We're going to keep the draft exactly as it is right now, uh, or as it was, um, just to make it fair. So everyone's going to kind of go through the same order. Let's see if we can get that player back in. Let's see who left. All right. They are trying to get them back in, uh, but uh, so you were saying you were saying that you have to have a lot of more. Uh, you kind of have coordination to coordination. Coordination, yeah. yeah. When you when you're playing with Karazim, otherwise you won't get any heals. <laughs> yeah, his only heal is basically his W, for the most part. So. You need to be in a really close proximity to to get the healings, but uh, yeah, I I really feel like you need a lot of uh, coordination. So, uh, but what work Afro Hot had there so far? It's a lot of dive. They have Diablo trying to charge in and uh, bring someone back to his team, and uh, with Jaina slow, with Malthiel that can jump onto a target. So. They are trying to to get onto uh, Deku King or any of the backline heroes that uh, that Arrogant Nephilim is going to pick. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, I believe. Yeah, I believe we're still trying to get this last player in. So I don't know. In the meantime, do you have any jokes? You got any jokes for me? <laughs> jokes should be reserved for you. You have everything. Oh man, I think I blew through all of my jokes talking with Swing during the <laughs> during the the playoffs. Um, but I do have my my fake sound laugh track, which you won't be able to hear. But I'm gonna play a clip right now of Sally Whitemane, and then I'm gonna play one of. Oh, we might be getting back in. Here's Decker Kane sound. Stay a while and. Oh. All right. Looks like we are getting our 10th player. They're pending. Get in here. Mic check. Check one, check two. Pending, pending. Oh, nope. They did not accept. All right. Well, uh. <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy this. Enjoy this lovely song. <laughs> <gasps> oh, here we go. Okay, great. Now we do have my check, so we have all 10 players back in. All right, I'm just going to see uh, uh, if everything's all right. Maybe maybe they have an explanation, possibly, of, of what could have happened. Sometimes, uh, you know, yesterday, I believe it was, four members all dropped out at the same time in a Div C Team 4 Psycho Swarm because uh, they're all playing together and their power went out. So... All four players dropped at once, um, which is unfortunate. I, I think they're going to reschedule that game too, hopefully. 
Uh, oh, so they only played that one game and then they're holding off to the, se to, uh, the second game? I think so. I, I'm pretty... I, I mean, it's really up to the other team. I don't know. They could... Uh, I believe it was the Dunning, Dunning Kruger Knights. Or I'm, I know I'm butchering that, but uh, I think they do have the option of like saying, no, actually, we are going to make you take a fourth for the second game. I'm not sure if they enforce that or not. Most of the time they don't, but they may have. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to see if uh, everyone's ready, ready to go. Our last picks were Diablo Maev. Uh, is that true? Not sure if they registered. I know. I know we saw the Diablo. Diablo and Kerosene was the, the yeah, the the third and fourth pick there. So I don't think Workout Pro Hard picked their last uh, player yet. So because I did not see Arrogant Nephilim last to pick there. Right. Okay. All right. Let's make sure everyone bans the same thing. Just to make sure. And uh, I'm gonna pause it. Oh, I can't pause it once it's in game <laughs> because of this uh, this bug. I was gonna pause it and be like, "All right, is everything fine?" But uh, uh, Trape says he has the full draft and he can call it. As long as those two teams are okay with it, that should be fine. All right. Okay, they're both ready. So here we go. We're going to go back in. Starting right now as we go into... Dragonshire. Dragonshire. Thanks for sticking around, guys, in Twitch chat. Hopefully this goes quickly. And uh, if anybody sees anything shady go on as far as bans or picks... KT? Show me a KT. Show me a KT. There we go. KT. All right. Can you remember what the next ban is? Dahaka? <laughs> I would believe so. <laughs> I like how I ask you and then I just answer. <laughs> that was dumb. Okay, you call the next one. Do you remember what the next one is? This is a game of memory. I... Jimmy? <laughs> oh! A winner! Uh, okay, so I'm doing the next side... Uh, Urel. Okay, yeah, Urel. And since you called that still from the other game, you get another chicken honk. So many chicken honks! Oh my goodness. I'm gonna wear those things out. As with Dan, first pick. Excellent, excellent. I think I think there was one pick that we didn't see, so we couldn't just launch into the game. Yeah, I think, well, I believe they thought Elgin Nephilim picked the last two picks. Maybe they have, but I did not catch that, so. Yeah. We'll find out in a second. We'll get there. It's almost like we've seen this draft before somewhere else. I think we have. I have you now. Yep. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yep. Just playing some sound clips here. All right. So we're getting close now. Oh, that's right. Genji and Arthas were picked. So, and we know the last pick is going to be Maev. All right, so now we're good to go. Everyone is still in the game. This is good. Swap round where everybody clicks the the arrows and then everyone gets mad at you because you switched to a different hero. Have you ever accidentally done that? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I might have. <laughs> You're like, I, I want know. that hero. I'll click it. That sounds like something I would do. I'd be like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I click this? And then we lose the, the match, and then everyone gets mad at me, and then I get kicked, and, you know. <laughs> whole bunch of drama for your mama. You know how I roll. All right, I'm going to be... Tr right. I'm going to try to get through the names of uh, work hard, throw hard faster this time, so I give you more time, because I know I kind of <laughs> left you hanging there, and then you have to track them while they're all running around. I would just say it's because of the amount. It's blocking everything, spinning circle there i like to think it's just because i'm bad at this game so <laughs> you know one or the other 
All right, here we go. Game two. All right, so here on the blue team, on uh, work hard, throw hard, we have Derg playing the Malfiel. We have Mike Check playing the Maev. We have Havoc, X Havoc playing the Diablo. We have Delita playing the Jaina. And we have uh, Ash Rain playing the Kerosene. All right, so on the right hand side in the red, it's uh, Arrogant Emblem. The Kaladin on Genji, now Pointer again on the Dagger King, Kaimi on Atanas, Tribes on Asmodan, and lastly Sagittai on Johanna again. Awesome, thank you, sir. Looks like Artanis is going to split off top at the very beginning for Arrogant Nephilim. Maev hiding in the bushes looking for that gank. I'm sure I'm going to call uh, Maev uh, Medivh at some point. <laughs> I do it all the time, so I apologize in advance. Johanna jumping in, getting those blinds, <laughs> using Unstoppable to get out of that pole. Very nice. As long as uh, Johanna can peel for the back line, I'm not sure how much my F can, can do. That's actually the perfect example. He just, uh, my F tries to pull uh johanna and then she just used unstoppable yeah it makes it really hard to you got to start pulling someone else i guess if you're going to make a play here comes diablo looking for a flank possibly on johanna oh here's going to be a big bind maybe no does not go off they're going to fight it out here diablo is taking a lot of damage but he's going to be fine in the top lane big matchup here between artanis and malthiel Seems like that would go to Malfiel? I don't know. What do you think? That's just, uh, that's an unknowledgeable I would, guess. Uh, I would think Malfiel has an up hand. Malfiel seems to be doing well into a uh, uh, high health pool uh, kind of bruiser. So with his uh, percentage damage. So I would give the up hand to Malfiel. Okay. All right. Well, we'll check in on them and see how they're doing. And XP advantage actually going right now to work hard through hard. So I mean, it's not it's it's significant too. It's about half a level. I believe it's when they went down to the bottom lane first. Maybe is that where they gained the XP? I'm not sure. Ooh, getting very low on Genji. Genji will drop. That was a good stun by Diablo and follow up by by Maev. And Asmo. it's going to be more Asmo than it's going to drop here as well. Two for nothing. Talent tier advantage for the next 12 seconds, maybe even less. <laughs> but uh, two kills, and that's uh, that's not nothing. Siege camp getting picked up here by work hard, throw hard. Genji is rotating to the top here and trying to see if he can uh, get a pick on Malthiel. Yeah, Malthiel is low. And he oh, looks like he's going to go down. That was that was a nice pick. Uh, get a little bit of that XP back that they lost before. They secure the top shrine. Bottom shrine is still work hard, throw hards. Might see Johanna push here onto the point. Deckard. It's got to be careful not to get Embril bound. If that is the correct talent. <laughs> All right, here comes the rest of work hard, throw hard, leaving Malthiel on the top. And we have a 4v4 here. Arrogant Nephilim wants this shrine for sure. Because they have control of the top. Johanna doing a really good job of just soaking everything. That's what she does. Although it does kind of leave the rest of the group open. I think Diablo probably wants to try to get a stun on that Genji. If they can pick that Genji... That'll make them be able to feel a little bit safer. Yeah, because that's all uh, Arrogant Ephilim has at this moment in terms of damage until uh, Esmodan get his stack. Here we go. My F is taking a lot of damage. He's backing out. Genji trying to get some get some decent DPS out there. Bring one of them low enough to engage on. But he's going to go mid. Maybe get some XP there. Going, looks like it's going all the way up top again and try to get a pick on Malthio. Oh, we've seen this before, but it looks like Dirk is... Oh, Dirk was possibly going to go up there. 
And once they saw Genji decided, nope, not gonna happen. Charge onto Deckard Kane, but doesn't do much. No flip into the rest of the team. My Ev is going to be soaking that mid, and then now joining the rest to give him a 4v3 advantage. Work hard, throw hard in this bottom lane. But here comes Genji too, so it's going to be kind of tied up. There's a lot of power in this bottom lane because of the camps and the pressure that you can that you can push forward with this. So having a strong presence in the bottom lane and winning that lane really does give you a good advantage. Yeah, definitely. This is pretty much the lane of this map, and uh, you really want to control this map. I mean, this lane. Uh, and it will play Dragon Shire game. You don't see like the Dragon Light. Uh, until really late actually, so we'll see if they can keep controlling the point and uh, when are we going to see the first Dragon Knight? Kime doing a good play, once again going up top and securing that kill onto Malthiel. And that's a 4v3 though here in the bottom lane. Johanna doing an excellent job of covering covering the rest of the team. A big stun on uh, Diablo stun onto Asmodan. Now Diablo is in trouble. Is taking a lot of damage. Johanna is is kind of isolating uh, Diablo. Diablo. Have to get out here. Yeah, and because now here's Genji, and Genji's going to come in and, and probably try to finish some of these people off. Oh, Jaina's low. Jaina does drop, but now Diablo is very low as well. Can he make it out? Does not. Malthiel. Fighting Artanis again up in the top lane. The the XP advantage has now shifted over to Arrogant Nephilim. They do have both of these shrines, so if someone can pick up this Dragon Knight, we're going to go to town. Johanna looks is... Looks like they'll get the first Dragon Knight. Yep, absolutely. Six minutes in, first Dragon Knight goes to Arrogant Nephilim. With the 10 advantage... Tens are coming out. We see X Strike on Genji. We have Tide of Sin on Asmodan. Lornado from Deckard Kane. Blessed Shield from Johanna. And a held pick right now for Artanis. Oh, it came out. Purifier Beam. It's the P from space. <laughs> Looks like tens are coming out for work hard, throw hard. Do you want to see what they got going on over there, Key? Yeah, they just got 10, and uh, Malthiel went with eight, uh, Last Rite, Jaina is on Ring of Foros, Kerasim on 7 Sidus Strike, and Maiev uh, Warden's Cage, and uh, Diablo on Lightning Breath. And it looks like I missed it, but it looks like there's another gank by Genji into the top lane on this, on this Malthiel. Genji... You know, doing a, doing a lot of work, shifting from one lane to another, and uh, being able to 2v1 up there. Dragon Knight goes down. But there is going to be a, a little bit of a rumble here. Oh, Karazim gets takes too much damage, goes down. Here comes Ring. This catches three people. It was a nice ring. Lightning Breath comes out for a Diabler. But it uh, looks like no other members are going to drop right now from Work Hard, Throw Hard. Yeah, that Ring and Lightning Breath... Uh prevent any further damage, but it looks like Yerrigan Nephilim trying to see if they can push this uh, bottom forward a bit more. Yeah, they're at least going to try to grab this well. Knock that out of existence, but here comes here comes Karazim. Karazim's back in business. Good charge by Diablo. Keeping them back. Now they've got, they've got a protection of creep, a creep wave pushing up. Just for a second, but they decide, no, forget it. We're just going to go for camps. We're moving on. Uh, up at the top, Malthio is again really low. Uh, it's really tough for Malthio sometimes uh, to try to keep up with uh, solo laner. Yeah, and, and when you're constantly getting ganked by Genji, that can be tough on anybody. Genji's one of those heroes, you know, he's jumping around, he's sliding around all over the place, and, like, if you don't see him, you're like, oh, he's probably just, you know, jumping over the bush saying, I need healing, or something like that. But then all of a sudden, he's appeared in another lane, and he's all over you. Unleash the dragon's wrath. So, the second Dragon Knight control point is coming up in 20 seconds. 
Very good, very good. Everyone will be fighting for that. We're going to see the Bruiser Camp being picked up right now from Arrogant Nephilim. Uh, I'm uh, Same thing happening uh, over here for Work Hard, Throw Hard. They're picking up their camp. Diablo is taking a lot of damage. Is going to probably get stuck here and does go down. My F getting chased. It's going to get a little bit of reinforcement here from Karazim. And we have entered the next dragon phase here. Well, not the fat dragon phase, the uh, the temple phase. Big fight mid. X-Blade comes down. Hero slain. And my F drops. Worth the ult, I guess. Every time you if you every time you use an ult, X strike. Uh, every time you use an ult and it gets a kill. I think it's worth it, but I guess it all depends. So it's a quick Dragon Knight for Aragon Nephilim, so now they will look to do more damage than the first one. They probably would take the mid fort here and just rotate down to Bach. They do take that mid fort. It looks like they're like, hey, no, we're here. We're gonna we're gonna start taking the mid keep structure wall. Which uh, I think has you know, it's the closest lane to the Dragon Knight. It might not be the winning lane, but it's definitely better than the top lane. <laughs> Here comes the ring. Does catch a couple. Oh, lightning breath coming out too. Jane is very, very low. Running. So is Maev, as well as Karazim. Good charge by Diablo, but it's not going to do much to Johanna. The Dragon Knight only has, uh, you know, maybe a sixth of its health left. And it will be ending soon, but it's going to get uh, as much damage onto this keep. And I think they will get this keep. Yeah, it looks like they will get this kill for sure, and the swap actually got Jaina, and he will fall along with my F. And, and there's the more. Shield came out and it's there goes Diablo it's and really Karazim. Yeah, it's a four. It's a four-man wipe. Do you think they're are they're trying to core here? Do you think they can do it? I think... Yeah, it looks like uh, it's only Malthea now, and the next closest is ten seconds. Now Malthea is down. Looks like they will just wow the core and. Uh, Take the series. It looks like it. They there's no one alive on the team of work hard, throw hard. The core is down to thirty percent. Game two goes to arrogant nephilim two and zero. Oh. GG's coming out. All right. Pretty, pretty dominating uh, series from arrogant nephilim. They uh, yeah the two the two oh oh that reminds me I gotta adjust the score here. I always forget. So. I'm going to just do that right now. Bloop. All right. Hopefully that shows up. Actually, it won't, won't show up on this screen, but it will later. All right. So looking at the, the post game, it looks the numbers look similar, similar to uh, to game one with the, the kills to deaths here. Um, 14 to 2. What uh, is it? Is it was it just the, the ganking in the top lane? What do you what do you think? gave uh, arrogant uh, nephilim the advantage and also the, the ability to come back from the experience loss at the beginning of the game yeah like uh, it looks like we have had did a bit better with the two early uh kill but then uh but then it got away from them uh with matthew constantly getting ganked by genji up top there and uh also kerosene only did seventeen thousand healing there which it's Definitely not sufficient to keep his team alive. Expansion, uh, Kerasim needs a lot of team coordination there. Uh, so it's tough. It's it's a tough draft for them. Uh, so hopefully they can adjust and do better on the next series, uh, whoever they face. But uh, great job for Arrogant Nephilim for sure. Yeah, they, they played very, very well. Uh, we're going to get Trabe in here. So let's jump. We're going to have to move in Discord to a lobby. Let's just jump into lobby three. That's where Trabe is. All right, I'll see you there. All right. Hello, sir. Oh, hello, hello. Congratulations on uh, on the 2-0 and o victory tonight. Thank you. Very, very well played. Uh, you guys kind of had quite quite the domination in game one of getting ahead in in experience, holding on to that lead, pushing it, and, and securing it. 
do you mind if we ask you a few questions? No, absolutely. Go for it. What is your favorite candy bar? <laughs> That's an excellent question, actually. I'm just saying. Huh. Your fans deserve gonna, to know. I'm going to go a little obscure here. I'm going to go the Reese's Fast Break. <laughs> oh, no. Another person who know. calls it Reese's. Oh, what? Reese's? What are you calling it? Okay, okay. If you if you get the candy that is uh, the brand that you just said, and it comes in, like, those little, those little uh, like, M&Ms, what would you call those? I would probably call those Reese's Bites or Mini Reese's. But, like, if they're called a product name like would you call it Reese's Pieces or would you call no. it Reese's Pieces I would call it Reese's Pieces and then sigh and wonder what marketing <laughs> executive was mispronouncing their own product name so poorly that they thought they could market this well well played <laughs> well played well played thank you for sharing that but now on to some questions about uh, about the gameplay tonight thank you for tolerating sure, sure. Uh, so, can you just tell us, we're at the beginning of round one of NGS Season 5. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about, about your team and uh, how long like you've been here in NGS and what your experience has been? Yeah, so we are Arrogant Nephilim. Uh, our first season was last season, Season 4. We were in Div C West. Uh, we started off pretty rough, um, but improved a lot over the course of the season. Ended up about middle of the pack. Um, and so now we're in Div C again. Um, and it seems like previous Div C sort of split into all the really good teams went up to Div B, and the rest of us are chilling here. So we're hoping that we can slide up into that spot that was kind of left behind by the teams that have abandoned us. So you are going to pill, uh, fill the power void that has been left by some of the top Div C West teams of last season, is what you're saying. Well, so, somebody needs to do this. It's so, yeah, and and we it might as well be you, as right? As candidates as any. So we're going <laughs> to give it our best shot. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, thank you very much for the uh, for the follow red conscript. I appreciate it. Um, so going back to game one, uh, were, were you guys, uh, that was your map pick. Uh, do you guys feel like you have certain advantages in that map? That's why you like to pick it? Is, is the strategy you have for that map based on all the CC that you picked up um, and all the slows, or is it about camp control, or is it a mixture? Like, what is uh, what makes Volskaya a, a map that you wanted to play tonight? Um, well, overall, I'd say that we like the sort of team fight your brawlier maps a little bit. Um, Braxis, Tomb, Volskaya, uh, Shrine, we all feel pretty confident on those. Um, and especially, we, we were wanting to try out a couple of new heroes, uh, we didn't do so much of the Urel and the Thrall and the Deckard last season. Um, we thought they'd be really good here. We thought this would be a nice place to sort of test it out. It's a pretty straightforward map, so we could just kind of focus on, you know, doing what we do best, doing the team fights, not have to worry about macro play and camps and all that stuff. Well, you well, pl you played the camps very well. Very well. <laughs> that's that's for sure. <laughs> that was not my doing, but shout outs to No Pointer and Sega for keeping us on task there. All right. All right. Next question. Tell me about Yorel. How long has this been a weapon in your battle chest, getting the respect ban in game two? Uh, so the sort of big shakeup that we did between last season and this season is we more clearly defined who was going to be in offlane. Uh, last season, it was sort of Dekiladin and Kime switching back and forth. Um, but this time, we've decided it's going to be Kime most of the time, and that will sort of focus on hero pools a little more. So I think Yorel is one that he picked up in the offseason. Uh, I think I don't even know when she came out. She might not have even been available in season four. Um, but yeah, he, he's been really enjoying her. Uh, anything where you can sort of just jump in like a maniac and probably not die is a good Kime style hero. <laughs> so she goes right in there with what he likes to do. Uh, and it's been working out pretty well so far, I think. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, Key, did you have any questions for Trave about uh, game one? Uh, game one, I think you guys played really well. Uh, Broca Pro had, had a late game calm. You did not let them get there. Um, is that what, like, uh, are you familiar with this team? Or, like, did you do any scouting beforehand to try to, uh, to, to try to counter what they might have, uh, thrown to the table? So we were actually very lucky in this regard, uh, because Work hard, throw hard, had a match at 6.30 today that Crow casted. Mm -hmm. And so we just watched that as a team. 
Um, and that sort of helped us figure out what they like to do with their hero picks, how they approach maps. Um, one of the maps that they played was Volskaya. Uh, so we knew that we would kind of had a, we would have a pretty good idea of how they were going to approach it um, and what we could do to counter that well. Um, so that helped us out a lot. We watched a couple of their games from last season, but they, they had a bunch of roster changes, so they didn't end up proving too helpful. Um, but yeah, fucked but out there a little bit, I guess. Spies. Spies among us. <laughs> do you, Just a few. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like there's an advantage <laughs> to playing two maps, uh, or two, uh, sorry, two matches back to back on the same night, or do you like spreading it out? Uh, I guess we're going to find out. We've never actually done the doubleheader before, but we've got one next week. Oh. So. Perfect. We'll be able to see how that goes and report back. When, when uh, are you, when are you sure playing next week? Yeah, it's Tuesday at 8 p.m. PST and then 10 p.m. And Red Conscript has picked up both of those matches. Oh, fantastic! Very thankfully. Well, um, everybody, make sure you check those games out for uh, equally uh, awesome games. I, I think having the double header sort of has a multiplicative effect. If you do well the first game, you can carry that momentum and that good energy into the next game. Um, and if you struggle a little bit you get maybe a little bit tilted it can be kind of sort of hard to jump back into it um so yeah props to work hard throw hard because i know that if you go out there and their first match they had some close games but didn't end up pulling it out um it can be tough to get the mental energy back where you need it to be and i think they did a good job and they came out pretty strong um in the first game we played against them so okay yeah, good mental toughness there well fantastic uh yeah you guys played awesome um so even even against the team that got a little bit of a little bit of a jazz beforehand uh oh my goodness the chat room weenus pieces oh this is such this is not... that's so much better we should mail them about that <laughs> okay i'm gonna read this it might be ween weenies pieces oh my goodness i don't know if i'd eat those i don't i don't know i'd, I'd maybe i'd maybe try them okay let's move on we'll to game two once, right? <laughs> yeah exactly you can't knock it till you try it uh, maybe some things like I, I'd skip I'd skip like murder and you know a couple other things along that line but uh, let's talk about game two real quick all right so this was not your map pick uh, you first pick Asmodan bringing out Asmodan strong is what it seems like uh, you had a plan for Asmo uh, I, key 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 tells me a lot of things when we're talking because I don't know Jack and he's like well I don't know if Asmodan is so strong on this map do you feel like Asmodan is really strong on this map, Trabe, uh, for your team in particular? Yeah, we found that any map, uh, with the current new Asmodan, any map where you can get those tight rotations going between two lanes and get the stacks built up, we've just found Asmodan to be really powerful. Um, you have to approach him very differently than before the rework, where he was just sort of this solo lane globe throwing nightmare. Now you really got to get up in there. Um, but if you can have those long 4v4 brawls to build up your wrath stacks, and if you have a friendly Johanna there who's more than willing to help you build up your stacks on minions, um, you can take advantage of that scaling very quickly. And it, it's just super tough to keep up with on the enemy team because it's strong PvE push and strong team fight damage. Okay, so this rework has really kind of changed his dynamic for the match or for that for how he rotates with the team. Yeah, um, it's super convenient for me because I've always loved playing Asmodan, but I was never any good at him because I don't know how to play the map very well. <laughs> Um, but now I don't have to. Now I can go just chuck globes at people and still be pretty effective. So rework definitely a plus in my eyes. You're like, all right, I'm going to pick Asmodan. Kime, have fun in the off lane. I'm going to go party with the rest of our group. Pretty much. Um, I was, we, we've had some problems in the past with doing exactly that. Uh, we've been working on getting a little bit more rotation ganking stuff going on there. So we were, I know DeKilden was very happy to run up there on Genji every once in a while, cause some problems and head back down. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was gonna, I was gonna mention that the uh, the Genji rotations up there on on Malfuel, those were huge, and even some of the baits, some some of the baits from Martanis getting really really low, and it's like I'm just gotta stay here, it's gotta stay here a little bit longer. Genji's almost here. That uh, those rotations were 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 great, um, and they were very they were very tight. It was, yeah, uh, it, that's it was great. Um, that's one of the things we've been practicing for sure in the off season um, is. When the solo laner is in trouble, you got to be able to get up there and help them. And we didn't always do that in the past, but we're we're getting a little better at it now, thankfully. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have any questions? I mean, it seems you know it seems that you guys were a little a little bit behind in the very beginning of, of game two, and you quickly came back, getting experience from kills and really controlling the lane. Uh, do you have any questions uh, about game two key? 
Uh, so you mentioned just uh, basically you're trying to all you do is trying to build up Asmodan stack. I noticed that, like you mentioned, you are not even paying attention to the camps. So I did not believe you guys even take the siege camp once. So like, is that what you're trying to focus? Trying to get Asmodan stack and try to build up his damage uh, output. Yeah, the um the camps is definitely something we realized sort of at the end of the draft. We said great. Stick Artanis up top, the rest of us rotate bot. Who takes camps? Normally we have a Jaina or a <laughs> yeah. Greymane or a Phoenix or something, and this time we have like Genji and Deckard. Um, so the plan was just sort of, if we all happen to be there, grab it real quick. Um, but otherwise the Asmodan stacks are, that's that's our win condition basically. Right. If they have a Karazim healer, it's going to be tough for them to keep up if we can get the globes going. So we just wanted to get that as quickly as possible. Because um, Asmodan, Dunks three quarters of your health and Genji's there ready to clean up. It's a pretty good combo if you can make it work. No, definitely. Well set there. So good. So good. All right. Well, we're going to let you go in just a second. One last question. Actually, second. Uh, two questions. First one is, do you have a Deckard Kane impression? De Deckard Kane. Hello. Nornado. <laughs> yes. Potions. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I didn't play Diablo, so all I know is the skill names. Oh those my... are his skill names. That was fantastic. I really appreciate it. Do you have any shout outs, sir? Congratulations for your victory. Do you have any shout outs, any pimps or anything like that that you want to share? Uh, shout outs to Antaeus and Fierce Cow, who are our new subs for this season. Um, didn't get to get featured tonight, but I'm sure they'll be coming in. They've been helping us out a lot with drafting advice and filling in when we need them. Uh, both super great guys. Uh, and shout outs to Beast Coast, um, which all of our subs from last season abandoned us to go form a new team on the East Coast. They're in Div B East, Beast Coast. First game is next Tuesday at something. Yeah, um, so just turn on Twitch, every channel of Twitch, and wait. And eventually one of them will start showing a Beast <laughs> Coast game. I'm pretty sure. Just multi-Twitch it. Yeah, I wish I could remember more details than that, but... Everybody check your calendars. It's on the team up. You can get it. They're great. They'll, they're going to bring out some fun stuff. So, Fantastic. Well, congratulations again, sir. Thank you for the exciting games. Uh, good luck. We'll, uh, I, I mean, I'm in, I'm in your division as well. Maybe we'll play each, each other. Uh, and if so, you know, I'll be mad. I'll be mad and I'll be like, ah, I'm going to kill these guys. And then afterwards we get to go back to the Div C West Kumbaya circle. <laughs> but, well... <laughs> We look, we look forward to it. <laughs> I do. I do as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, have a great evening, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch you again soon. Yeah. Thanks for casting. We'll see you guys around. You got it. All right, Key. I think that's going to just about do it for this cast. Do you... I just want to say thank you again, sir, for joining me. It's such a great job. Believe it or not, folks, this is uh, Key's first co-cast, and I think he did such an amazing job. Uh, I'm really, really glad that he came out. It's, it's so much fun to see a whole bunch of new new... Uh, potential casters who are, are going to be coming into the league and they're trying it out. And uh, so I just wanted to say once again, thank you so much, sir. No, for, thanks for, for having here. me. I had a great time and uh, looking forward to another potential co-cast with, uh, with you or even any other casters. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure you might, you maybe, maybe you should grab another caster who knows a little bit more about things, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you are always welcome with me, sir. And uh, do you have any shout outs yourself? Uh, shout out to you having me here tonight. Uh, shout out to NGS. Uh, it looks like season five is going to be like awesome. So, uh, looking forward to all the games and all the matches. And uh, let's have a great season. Absolutely. 104, guys. Follow team 104, B Division. <laughs> See what happens from, uh, from the Captain Key support main. All right. Well, uh, you can. You can find me on Twitter at MoistWenus, uh, twitch.tv slash MoistWenus. Um, I think that's it for me. Thanks, thanks everybody in the chat for being here. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. And uh, we will catch you guys next time. And we'll leave you with this. Something else that Key can't hear. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night. <laughs>